Okay, continuing with every exam question that's ever been asked, we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations. And in the first part of this, we're going to be looking at the linear ones. Now, this whole document is fully hyperlinked and is always going to be linked in the description. So do make sure that you check that out and check out all of the other videos that I've got on my channel homepage. So these often come up in non-calculator, but this first one is coming up in a calculator paper. It's actually a super easy one because it's only question two. And it's because we can eliminate these straight away because these things are matching each other. So I'm just going to write it out so that I've got them written here, slightly larger. So 3x plus y is equal to minus 4, and then we get 3x minus 4y is equal to 6. Now, because these are exactly the same as each other, same begins with s, just like subtract does. So we're going to subtract these equations. 3x take away 3x is 0. They get eliminated. But this is the part where people sometimes make a mistake, and you've got a calculator, so we really shouldn't. We're going to do 1y and we're going to be subtracting negative 4y. And 1 subtract negative 4 is 5, so we get 5y. And then I'm going to do negative 4. Let me just clear that for a second, that went a bit funny. I'm going to do negative 4, and I'm going to subtract 6 from that, so we get negative 10. Now all I need to do is the negative 10, which is in my calculator, I need to divide that by 5. Calculator's not behaving today, which is minus 2. So y is equal to minus 2. Now what I'm going to do is take this first equation and I'm going to replace the y with a minus 2. So 3x minus 2 equals minus 4. That means I'm going to take my minus 4 and I'm going to add a 2 onto it. So 3x is equal to minus 2. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And when I divide that by 3, I don't really want to leave it as a decimal. I want to leave it as a fraction, which is minus 2 thirds. So that we get our answers. Our x is equal to minus 2 thirds and y is equal to minus 2. Now you can actually check that these are correct by substituting them in to the second equation. So because I've already got that minus 2 thirds in there, I'm going to do three lots of that answer. That's my 3x minus 4 multiplied by y, which is minus 2, and we do get the answer 6, which is what we were looking, there, looking for there. So I know before, before I even look at the mark scheme that I'm definitely correct. But we've got minus 2 thirds and minus 2. OK, this time it's a non-calculator one. It says solve these simultaneous equations. Now, there's a few different options you can do for this. You could either do substitution or you could do elimination. But I think this looks like it's set up quite well for elimination. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to times the second one by 5. You could times the top one by 3 to make the y's match. But I'm going to times the second one by 5 to make the x match. OK, so I'm going to write the first one out so that I get my 5x plus y equals 21. Now when I times them by 5, I mean times them all by 5. So that's 15x, sorry, 5x minus 15y equals 45. And then I'm going to do a subtract because the x's are exactly the same. Neither of them are one, it's not like one's positive and one is negative. So I'm going to do a subtract, they eliminate. That's y minus minus 15y. That's y minus minus 15 means plus 15. So that is 16y. And then it's going to be 21 minus 45. Well, I'll do 45 minus 21 and just make the answer negative. So that's 24. OK, great. So that's minus 24. Now I'm going to divide by 16. So that's minus 24 divided by 16. Now I can simplify that fraction. If I simplify that fraction by dividing by 8, I get minus 3 over 2. So I'm going to use the top equation that I've got here. And I'm going to replace y with minus 3 over 2. So that's 5x minus 3 over 2 equals 21. Now, if you prefer, you could say that that minus 3 over 2 is minus 1.5. So 5x is therefore equal to 21 plus 1.5, which is 22.5. All we need to do now is divide that by 5. Now, if it's a fraction, that's kind of easy. But I'll tell you what, we'll do it in sort of the, the long division way. We're going to divide that by 5. 5 goes into 22 four times, remainder 2. And 5 goes into 25 five times. So that means that x is equal to 4.5 and y is minus 1.5. So I'm just going to write those out as my answer. x is 4.5 and y is minus 1.5. And of course, you could give those as fractions, which would be 9 over 2 and minus 3 over 2. Let's double check we've got that right. If I had time, I might substitute into this second one to check that it's correct. But I think we're just going to look at these answers for this. So we get 4.5 and minus 1.5. And it does say OE, which means or equivalent. 
Okay, this time we have got one that's in context, so maybe it's not obvious that it's going to be a simultaneous equation. So it's a linear one, but it's worded. Now, if I'm going to say the number of teas is x and the number of coffees is y, it says that three teas and two coffees is seven pound eighty, and then it says five teas and four coffees is fourteen pounds twenty. Work out the cost of one tea and the cost of one coffee. Now, I think the easiest thing to do in this one is to take the first equation and to multiply it by two. So if I take that first equation that's at the top, I'm going to give a bit of space here, actually. I'm going to take that first equation and I'm going to multiply it all by two, which would give me 6x plus 4y. Now, £7.80, that's going to be £14, and then 80 pence gives you £1.60, so that's £15.60. Now, because I've doubled that one, I'm going to kind of just get rid of that. So what I did is I multiplied everything by 2, and now I've got the 4y's matching each other. Because they're matching each other, I can subtract them, so they've all been subtracted so far. 6x take away 5x, that's just x. 4y's cancel, I just need to do £15.60, take away £14.20, pretty easy one to do but it's £1.40, so that means that the cost of one uh, T is £1.40. Now, I could either use the top equation or I could use this bottom one. I'm going to use this bottom one that we've got here, and it's 5 times by £1.40 plus 4Y is equal to £14.20. So I need to do 5 times £1.40. Well, actually, I think you could do that probably without even a written method, because the 5 times a pound is going to give us £5, and 5 times 40p, well, that's going to give us 200p or £2. So that is going to be the £5 plus the £2. That is our £7 plus 4y is £14.20. I'm going to take away the £7 from £14.20, and I get £7.20. Now all I need to do is £7.20 divided by 4. 4 goes into 7 once remainder 3, 4 goes into 32 8 times, and 4 goes into 0 0 times, which means that y is £1.80. So I think we just need to do a final bit of an answer here, work out the cost of 1t. So a t is x, I think, yeah, so t is £1.40, and coffee is £1.80. You might not even have used a formal method to do this. You could do this just sort of doing reasoning in your head and say, oh, I'll double that and then I'll take them away, etc., etc. But this is what it looks like with algebra. So tea is 140, coffee is 180. Again, you could also check it um, in sub subbing them both in and seeing that you've got the correct answer as well. You could have used this one that's in blue. You could have used the black one. I used the third one. I would probably say the first one or the third one. The black one is probably more annoying calculations because the numbers are bigger. OK, well, now we've got this last one, which is actually simultaneous equations, but it's hidden in the context of some coordinates. So bear with me as we walk through this. It says a pattern is made from four identical rectangles. The sides of the rectangles are parallel to the axes, just meaning that none of them are kind of diagonal. We get told the point of coordinate A and we get told the point of coordinate B and we're going to try and work out what coordinate C is. But I think we'll kind of leave that for a second. I think what we want to do is find out like how long are each of the sides of the rectangles that we've got here. So if I just call one of these rectangles like this, I'm going to call the sides. I might not use x and y because I think it could confuse us with the axes that we've got here. I'm going to say that the shorter side is a and that the longer side is b, which means if I just sort of highlight these in different colors, if I say that a is this part, then you can see we've got an a here and that's just for the up and down measurements that we've got. And then if we're looking left and right, if we're saying that B is this part. You can see as we look across, we've got a B here and a B here. Oh, actually, look, there is a little bit of an A that we might need in this bit that we've got. And if we look at the B part as we go upwards, there is a B part here and here. Now, you're probably thinking, why is he doing all this weird highlighting? Like, what is going on with this? So let's try and see how that might help us with the next part. Now, if we look at comparing the B coordinates and the A coordinates in a couple of different ways. I'm going to start off comparing the B coordinate and the A coordinate in this sort of X direction. Now we know the difference between the B coordinates in the X direction. This B coordinate, so this A coordinate is 3 on the X axis and this B coordinate is 11 on the X axis. So the gap between 3 and 11 
is 8. So we know something. We know that the 8 is coming from something to do with these rectangles. And it looks like the gap here is a B, a B, and then it's subtracting an A. This gap is B plus B minus A. So B plus B is 2B. So 2B minus A is equal to 8. That comes from the fact of this 8 that we've got along the bottom here. Now, if we have a look at the diagram for this section, first of all, looking at the y coordinates, we're going from 4 all the way up to 20, which is 16. And this one might be a bit easier to see what it is because we've got a b, a b, and an a. There's no subtracting. So b, b, and a, that is going to be three, two b's, not to be uh, only two of them. And we have one A that goes with that, and that is equal to 16. Now, this one maybe is harder to spot. Notice how it looks like it's almost 2B, but we've come back A that we've got. Now, all I need to do is solve these equations simultaneously. Finally, we could either add these or subtract them. I think, subtract, I think adding is going to be easier because then these will cancel each other out. So I'm going to add these together. That's going to give me that 4B is equal to 24, which means that B is equal to 6. Now, if b is equal to 6, I don't know, I'm just going to take the second equation that we've got here. 2 times b, that's 12, plus a is 16, which means that a is equal to 4. So now we know in this thing that we've got at the top here, this is 4, and b is 6. So really not drawn to scale here at all. All we need to do now is find out the coordinates of c. So that means it was 3 along at this point, and we're now going to need to go for the x-coordinate, 6 more along. So for C, it is going to be already the a-coordinate is 3, and we're moving 6 along. It's going to be 9. And then we're going to say, OK, well, the y-coordinate of A is 4, and C is actually just coming up A. So it's going to be 4 plus 4, which is 8. Now, this, you've really got to understand coordinates, and then simultaneous equations kind of like slip in at the end here, which is why I decided to put this in the simultaneous equations context. Let's double check that we've got this right. So we do have uh, 9, 8 here, and we have got these equations that were set up. And it's kind of dense to read this, but we did come up with those same things of A and B that we've got there. And we've got that process of finding the coordinates of C. I guess what I could have done here is said that this 9 that we had that was a 3 plus a, and this 8 that we had here, you wouldn't need to show this to get the marks, by the way, that was going to be a 4 plus b that we had. Have I done that the wrong way around? Yeah, I have done it. It shouldn't be an a. That should be b, and that one there should be a, because it was at 4, and it was moving up a. Okay, so I think the next ones that we've got are all non-linear ones, so stay tuned if you want to check that out. Um, also, if you go to my channel, you'll see there's loads of other things that will be helpful for your revision. If you've got anyone that's um, also studying their GCSEs, share it with them. Just um, we'll help them out. Helps my channel out too. Thank you so much.